conversations across time. Conversations across cross time. Conversations across time. Conversations. Good evening, and welcome once again to Conversations Across Time. I want to introduce you to uh, our, our panel, but seated next to my left is my co-host, Babette Josephs, former state representative, Babette Josephs. Welcome, Babby. Thank you, thank you. And I, I'm going to uh, go first to Senator Sextus Julius Frontinus, who was here last week. Thank you for coming back, Senator. Glad to be here. Thank you. Seated next to Senator Frontinus is the 26th president of the United States who has, is a frequent visitor to conversations across time. Welcome back, uh, President Theodore Roosevelt. Thank Welcome, you thank for coming you. back. Glad to be here, thank you. Thank you. And uh, to your right is uh, Grace Ogot, who, is, who was a uh, Kenyan woman of note for her uh, activity regarding our topic tonight, and that is fresh water and what it means uh, for the political policies of a country. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. And seated next to Ms. Ogat is King Kamarabi, and uh, King Kamarabi was a Babylonian king who, his reign was from 1792 BCE to 1750 BCE. Welcome back. King Kamarabi. Thank you. I, I want to go to you, Senator Sexis. Uh, my question is, you are known as uh, uh, having written a seminal book regarding the use of water in Rome. So over 2,000 years ago, you were talking about the uses of water. Right, and I love water. And the name of my book was called The Equus Urbanus Rome, and it meant the water of the city of Rome. And our water was clean, and uh, we had fountains, we had public baths, uh, we had uh, wastewater, we had laws that uh, made sure that the water wasn't uh, contaminated from runoff from farms or waste. If uh, I had become water commissioner, I know you don't have a national water commissioner in your country, the United States. But we should States. have one. Maybe you think? should. Well, we supposedly have an environmental protection agency. We did up to the last but if I couple were, of months if anyway. If I were uh, analyzing, and again, I love water, if I were analyzing uh, your country, especially uh, one particular area, which has been in your news for a long time, I would entitle my book, De Sardinium, Aquis Urbanus Flintus, which right. means the dirty water of Flint. Ooh. And there's That's no. I, I know where you're going. That's wonderful. There is no reason that I can see for the people of that urban area, Flint, Michigan, to have contaminated, lead contaminated water. We didn't have Rome. No practical and scientific reason. There's no, there's no practical, scientific, or any other reason. There's political the, reasons, the, the as political we know. Political or greed, because that would never happen under my watch in uh, Rome, and it should not happen in a country that has the resources and the uh, technology. Of it would the not have States. happened in a locale that wasn't poor and inhabited by people who are brown and black skin. That, that's that what we I was know. Ask. The, the sad that thing we is. Know. Yeah, the sad thing of, about the, the, the crisis in, in Flint, Michigan, has a lot, it's, it's political. There, there's no doubt about that, and, and, but it, it, the fix would be easy if people wanted to fix it. But it's political, so people, the point is people don't want to fix it. Well, that's your political system and that's your political problem, but that's it would right. not happen in Rome, even the poorest people in Rome. The one thing I can uh, pat myself on the back for, even the poorest people in Rome had clean water. They may, ha may not have had as easy access to clean water as uh, myself and some of my fe fellow senators, but they all had clean water and they had water to bathe in and their, their, their waste was taken away so it wouldn't create disease. And uh, it, it, to me, it's a disgrace that we you cannot we provide clean water we for agree. your citizens. I agree. Yeah. It's a disgrace to what happened in Flint. It's a, 
It's a black eye on our whole country and our entire system of demo uh, democracy and our government. It is and, a terrible disgrace. And, it should have uh, never happened. I am sure that uh, there are other places in the United States that's had similar problems. Absolutely. I, and uh, I think that, that unless it's solved, uh, your country is going to have a major, major, major economic and political problems. In, in fact, um, in, in my opinion, uh, part of your education problem in your cities has to do with the lead that your young people are Absolutely. drinking in the cities and it's affecting their ability to oh. learn. And when yes. people talk about education in places like your city in New York or Philadelphia, mm -hmm. there's lead being given to these five, six, seven, eight-year-old children and it's affecting their ability to learn and it's stymieing them and then they want to, uh, your citizens or your politicians want to blame it on other things. How, however, the city of New York you have to give credit, I think, to the governor of New York. He refused to allow fracking to go on in the Catskills. He refused to allow water to be taken from those ri rivers that feed the Hudson. He said, I have 11 million people, 11 million people who need water in the city of New York. No fracking in New York, well, I, no fracking. I don't want to continue to pat myself or my fellow countrymen on uh, our backs, but your, your uh, uh, fracking and your pollution of your rivers and streams and allowing your rivers and streams to dry up would never happen in, in uh, Rome. They're poisoned, they're poisoned. Would never happen in Rome. Fracking, by the way, is the, the process that an industry uses to break up rocks to get so-called freer or cheaper natural gas, which would substitute for oil or coal. I was a stickler when I was water commissioner to make sure that uh, farming and waste and uh, were, were punished harshly when they contaminated our fresh water. And it seems to me that your politicians and your uh, people that make your laws in your Senate uh, don't care about that and are willing to sacrifice people's health and, and, and well-being for profits. It's hard to know if they're evils or fools. Uh, and that's what I'm getting ready to ask. I'm not- I'm I'm Can I just ask yes, a question? Yes, sure. Fracking, I, I know, you know, that has a, a horrible connotation because there's earthquakes in Oklahoma. And other things, and in Pennsylvania, but, it, and but a lot it affects of the water. It That's the one of the biggest. But things. isn't there a way to capture that water so that it can be uh, you know, filtered uh, chemically so that it can be? Yeah, released? you that can stop pure? fracking and go to renewables. But but even if you, you if, if you capture it, the companies, from what I understand, of course, we would never allow fracking. They they, they don't want to invest the money to do that. So. No, so that water, that chemical laden water, can't be recovered from those fractures in the earth any more than every diamond can be extracted from a mine. There's, it perhaps in some cases possible to recapture a majority of it, but those substances have no business being anywhere near water that will eventually be consumed, consumed used and, in and used, in, used in farming. Uh, there should be, listen, every river and uh, every stream and every lake that supports water for the population should be clean. There's no question about that. So, uh, right, every, but law, the, uh, every law that and I don't passed believe that promotes that should be a no-brainer. I mean, there's no question about it. Now, I don't think we can put our faith in technology that might or might not produce clean water after fracking. I don't think we can put our faith in technology that's going to uh, produce more water because we can't produce more water. There is only a, a, finite, a finite amount of it. What I think we really need to do is figure out a way to free up human time. And Which, that's why I'm so interested in what's going on in Kenya and in many African and South American, Central American countries where there's an effort to relieve women of this burden of being the sole people to produce water and giving them a chance to do something else, like learn a trade. 
Um, that's true. I also want to make point that what's happening in the United States isn't very far off of you know, what's going on in Kenya with the battle of water, just like you guys mentioned, what's happened in Flint. Because with the contamination of water, like people don't realize that water is life and water has an effect on everything that we do. So we wanna make sure that we bring the resources into the villages to be able to, to provide these, provide families with with clean sources of water and provide villages with different outcomes and more hands to fully. You're, please, you're, you're clearly correct, both of you. However, this comes back to a very fundamental idea of mismanagement of people because the there's a thousand, two thousand years ago, there was enough engineering knowledge and material science knowledge to build aqueducts that span hundreds of miles. There's no reason that this problem c cannot be solved. The very simple fact is that the people who have the resources to solve the problem do not care enough to solve the problem because oh, for whatever reason they political don't political problems what we're they saying. don't have the political motivation to solve the problem right There's but the problem let us let us not deceive ourselves into believing that the problem is in any way physically insurmountable no no it's a political problem it is a political there problem. is water if we in this country didn't use 420 gallons a day every one of us is that the Statistics. If you, if you count all of the all of the water that is used we on our behalf, from, I counted from industry. Yes, I counted. Which well, the, the the use of water and how it's used is very important because if it's used efficiently, then there'd be more water to spread around to the rest of the world, and we could ship water to Kenya and pipe it in, and it wouldn't be a, a major problem there. For instance, and and you mentioned that Babette, uh, that. The average person in the United States uses 450 liters of water a day. Liters, not which gallons. Is just a very small part of that is ingested in the drinking water, which of course we need to survive. Yes. Can't live more than three days without water, by the way. So, but the rest of it is bathing, shaving, wasting, Industry. flushing. Industry. That we don't recapture or recover. A lot of it is not recaptured and recovered. When you look at other civilized countries of the world, industrialized and civilized countries of the world, like Germany, for instance, Germany uses on average, a person in Germany uses on average about 150 liters. So that is. So if but it also people in the United States, I'm sorry, if people in the United States, we call through instruction, kids. through education, how frequently do Germans bathe? They, they, listen, I, I've been in Germany. They don't all smell. I mean. <laughs> Well, perhaps, 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 well there, there's ways to say. bathe, and you know, there's perhaps ways to bathe. Perhaps you should take a page out of our book and have public baths, and we could share the water. Ah. Right. It also ties into just educating the community, educating the villages and the people, because yes, it's easy to just ship water into these places, but it's also another thing when you actually teach to people how to harvest this water. Right. Also, because problem. as when you ship yes. water in or you have make sh you have ways to clean up this water so mm -hmm. these water sources that, you know, the machinery breaks down whereas whereas in developing countries in the villages when you teach them like how to build their wells you have a and you give them the education on how to how to harvest this water and that like babette says that frees up time for the women in the community it's to so be able important. to do other things so but it also gives the village of a, it's a different it makes the water even more important because it's more central the community to their is is this important and it makes for the, the women community. important. Well, when when we talk when we talk about influencing the people to use less water, a perfect example is in California. Most recently, there had been a, a seven-year drought. Uh, I mean, it's very hard for those of us who live on the East Coast to imagine that they could go a full year in Southern California 
with less than an inch of rain. It's a desert. And, it's I not mean, hard it, to it's imagine. Unbelievable. It's so a desert. The drought, the drought was so severe that the local government, the, the state government, and then the local governments came in and banned and barred people from planting things around their, their lawn and around their pools and whatever. But what and people And actually, were in, in order to make that work, Almost the local governments would, I think. funded support to the people to take away that space to make non, uh, non-planted land so available, to cement it over. Or, or they had in. to plant cag- but, desert or, stuff. But the government, yeah. well, I just wanted, so the government encouraged. Not only encouraged, but it went water. beyond encouragement because if people didn't comply with the regulations, they get then fined. they would be fined and punished. So, so there was a law put into place that, that had consequences if you didn't follow through. And it worked. It worked to a, a certain extent anyway. And luckily, this past year, there was a tremendous amount of snowfall in the mountains, which brings a lot of water into, yes. into the area. And the, the flow of the Colorado River as a result of a lot of rainfall helped to, to alleviate the drought for now. However, if they want to look forward, they'll probably keep those regulations in place, maybe lift them slightly, but keep them permanently in place so that they know they can have this in the future. And the problem out there in, in the West and Southwest is really severe because about four or five states depend on the waters of the Colorado River for their subsistence. And along the way, agricultural industries have diverted the water so, so badly that the Colorado River doesn't even flow into the Gulf of Mexico or into the Sea of California anymore, into Mexico. So there's problems. Where does the water come from? How can we allocate the use of water? And can the government play a part in helping and making the people use less water? I think in California, that was proved. The and I think that I think that, that the plan in California is, is evidence that it can work that way. Yeah. The government can always play a part. The question is, which part will the government play? Because just like in every other aspect of life, <coughs> there are opportunities to do good and bad. And this United States government at the present time is doing so much bad all over the world that similar to the way that even today, Babylon is used by some cultures as a catch-all term for oppression. So has every subsequent empire. And the United States, with its refusal to secure water for vulnerable populations, is earning its place in history alongside all of those, all of those other now perceived to be evil empires. Oh, I think we're perceived and quite rightly evil all over the world. But and water isn't distributed, is not divided it's equally. Not equitable. Because when you yeah, think yeah. about the crisis situation that happened in Flint and how you know there's an entire city of water that's contaminating, you compare that to places in Kenya like Nairobi where there are Ugh. residential communities that have 24-hour running water and they don't have to think about going to get water. Where only you know a, a mile away there's a slum in a village that has no water and they have to walk past these communities with this 24 hour water just to gather their water. So, and this is, these are places that are in the same vicinity of each other. So why is it that this neighborhood has water and this neighborhood doesn't have water is because one neighborhood is influent and another neighborhood is poor. And that's one of the situations that, you know, happens in the United States, like in Flint, that the majority of the people in that area are poor people, therefore they don't care to get them water. And, like and you the say, the situation in California, I, 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 you know, I asked the question, well, who did that apply to? Because there are some people that can just throw money at the fines and say, well, it's a fine. I, can, I want my yard to look the way I want it to look. So it doesn't necessarily apply to everybody because if you have the influence and the money to get the resources that you need, you can just do that at a, and, at and a drop of the dime first happen. happen to walk. But that's Some why of the that did happen, in and there and were the right a lot thing. of complaints. And in a lot of places, I read, heard that there was peer pressure from neighbors that helped. You know, people people didn't talk to you if you had this whole garden. There in certainly Europe. was that in California. Yeah, by the way. that's so what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. We can consider that then to be a 
a, a, another iteration of the similar kind of social pressure that the, that my code first relied upon. Because exactly we can all right. acknowledge right. Yes. Right. that in every case where there is a dispute that can be that can be brought to public attention, there isn't actually intervention by a judge. And in, in, in many cases, the disputes are resolved within a micro community of, right. of a group right. of neighbors. Right. And when you have a situation, for instance, where you can free up most of the women, um, if somebody's husband or father doesn't like it, there's a lot of peer, pre peer pressure from the other women. You know, they, but the what's first, wrong with the you? Your thing, daughter, your daughter should be going to school. What's the first wrong with thing you? That the world has you know? to understand, the United States has to understand, is how important clean water is, and that has to deal with education. You can go into what should be done in Kenya or California, but the fact of the matter is, if you ask the average politician, the average citizen of all your countries, what's the most important resource or what are the most important resources, they will not list water, and that's part of the problem. I probably part would say Part of the problem is because, especially in a country like your United States, Ms. Babette and Ms. Crawford, seems that water is so plentiful unless you go to Flint. Now, maybe you should take some of the people and, and have them spend a week in Kenya in her village and see what's going on, and maybe they would see the problem of uh, what water can mean. So well, it's not so far the, removed, by the way. The, the United Kingdom has to import 40% of its uh, clean water. Well, well, I'm, I'm saying, but so, before, so it's not just before, limited to no, developing well, countries. I mean, it's the what I'm trying to say is the problem is we, we understood in Rome how important water was, and I don't think the population or the political establishment in your country, the United States, and I know you did that, President Roosevelt, and uh, if you were president now, we might be moving in a different direction. Oh, we but certainly would be moving in a different direction. In a different direction. direction. But we have to educate the people because people worry about nuclear war, conflict. I worry the about war, that. War, war, the, the, if the world water supply continues on the rate it's going and people don't wake up, there will be uh, conflicts, wars. Over but there water. is an acknowledgement in the, over, in the U.S. Yes, water. that water is an issue because think about the Dakota pipeline. It was re out, rerouted from one area because it was going to contaminate the water and reroute it to another area with another Which group of people it's now running and now it's going to run through the, and contaminate in water yeah. and like so you're saying that this community is more important than this community but like, it's yes. not just that, that no. decision yes. it's not just that any individual it's community is more important it's a decision that's made by the elite and corporate money is perverting a lot of other processes as well i know i saw over a hundred years ago the the conservation argument as opposed to the the capital argument that, and today the same exact thing is happening. The Koch brothers and every one of their ilk have turned against climate change, which is a major problem today. The worst problem we have. A terrible problem. It will eliminate, it'll eliminate mankind eventually if we don't do something about it. And yet because it stands in the way of their oil companies and coal mines and everything else, they are it's against the right it and called it a hoax to do with when science has made it choose. a fact. You know, I knew about it back in the early 1900s when I, when I took a ride on a train through 24 states and I saw the magnificent vistas in this country and set up national parks, uh, the, the, the yes, forerunner of the national parks and conservation, the when I stopped the railroad from invading our indigenous people's grounds. Which they're trying to, which, which, which they, uh, pipelines are By the way, it's happening doing. today, the exactly. same exact thing, where the Sioux, right. the Sioux uh, pipeline, an oil pipeline is running through the, the river that the Sioux need to live, to so, drink. So it's still going same on, thing. so why do you bother? And it's Justice all because of corporate money. Justice the same corporate power. money that and that's what, and that runs our economy Justice. for our benefit. When you we give, you want to call the corporations people. This is why we they're not people. America was built on free enterprise. Justice Zippo, you don't believe in that because let's let's. Talk, uh, Mr. Uh, President hey, Roosevelt, I know what I believe in. No, you don't because you're a hypocrite and the Koch brothers, who we just cited, and other people. Always cited, the Koch brothers who 
do not care about global warming because it would affect their profits in the coal and oil business. And we would benefit took, if they just you, left them excuse alone. Excuse me, excuse what? me. You took free trips and free lodging and, free, and all kind of goodies from them. So? And, and then you don't recuse yourself from the cases. So you're a hypocrite. Plus, you don't know, you, you don't use judicial reasoning. You're bought, paid, and stamped by these people. Result so oriented. Why? I it's would result say oriented. that the fact that he is bought and paid for uh, is evident. I would also say that as we discuss these things, it's not just the Sioux. All across America, there are indigenous people and regular old immigrated Americans who are suffering at the uh, behest of corporations who make decisions that are against environment, that strip people of their rights to participate in the decisions. Maybe there is no saying, global warming. Well, oh. for those... That's just a theory, for it's those, not a fact. For, 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 like those, who, for right? those who would Another embrace theory. ignorance as a fact, Germs this may well scenes. be Another true. Theory. It's that it's That's true, but it's not just that any individual community is more important than another. It's also who does that community, who, who responds to that community, who has ties to that community? Yeah, what right. political power did that community Or economic. Right. Or economic. But, but what economic. you said is right. Not only, do, of course, do we in this country have to recognize how valuable water is, we have to remember it's finite. It's only of a course. certain amount of it. Of course. And well, it doesn't get bigger. Well, but, technology, uh, technology has to advance to the point No, we, we can't can make water. Huh? Well, we can reuse. Well, we can reuse. That's yeah. Well, that's you can reuse the water. You, you can reuse. Clean it and reuse it. And you can make more. Desalinate it. You can make There's more efficient use of it. Yes. And and also, you can figure out ways technolo technologically that uh, industrial waste, where they use water to uh, contaminate with the industrial waste. Maybe there are other things technologically where you don't have to use your water supply for that purpose and just use your water supply for agriculture, for uh, bathing, drinking, for bathing waste. and drinking and waste. But Sanitation. It's, cer yeah. it's certain that, that industry has had uh, an impact on um, the natural resources of this country. That, oh, that, God knows. And, and, and to your point, Mr. God. Uh, when you were talking about uh, what is going on in the Standing Rock uh, Native American community, that the fact that the Dakota Pipeline is going to be routed through land that belongs to, belongs to them, and they have said, well, this is going to contaminate our water source. The Army Corps of Engineers determined that the Dakota Pipeline would be harmful to uh, to the city of Bismarck, because originally the way that the pipeline was going to uh, traverse, it would have <coughs> had impact on the city of Bismarck. So they made a decision to reroute the, the pipeline through the Standing Rock Reservation. So that's, you are exactly correct. There was a decision that was made that the community of the Native Americans in Standing Rock was not was as valuable not as, as the people of Bismarck. Mm -hmm. and, and that certainly wouldn't make the same kind of fuss. Yes. So let's just walk right over. That was the decision that was made. And th let's this, walk this is, over these folks. This kind of this kind of decision making process is one of the reasons why I set out my code and law as a written law, a written set of laws that could be viewed by all of the people who could read. This. Uh, the, this additional secrecy, ongoing more and more layers of secrecy, are unquestionably causing the downfall of the United States Empire. And it's with that, with that, believe it or not, we are at the end. And this, we've just started to get to what is is politically maybe they'll come an back. Issue. Maybe yes, maybe maybe we can uh, maybe we can impose upon our audience to join us next week, and and ask our panelists if they will return because we really are getting to something that is quite significant. This is a crisis that is growing, and we need to deal with it now. We need to address it now. So this has been conversations across time. Please join us next week.
for more of this discussion about the politics of clean water. Thank you. Conversations across time. Conversations across, across time. Conversations across time. Conversations.